Hi everyone, my name is Ava and I'm a Master in Neuroscience student at the University of British Columbia and today I'm going to be talking about the functional brain networks that underlie memory recall and imagination. So for over 25 years, researchers have used functional magnetic resonance imaging to investigate changes in blood oxygenation level dependent signal that underlie autobiographical event stimulation. And this um, endeavor began with studies of memory recall that revealed consistent activation of a core network that maps onto what we now know as a default mode network. More recently, this work has brought into consider other forms of autobiographical event stimulation that also rely on the default mode network, such as the imagination of future events and counterfactual thoughts. Although patterns of bold changes induced during autobiographical event stimulation overlap substantially with the uh, default mode network, it's become increasingly clear that it often extends beyond this network. So, the, But the challenge with examining networks underlying autobiographical event stimulation is that fMRI studies typically analyze the bold correlates of the street cognitive processes that occur over milliseconds and up to a few seconds. And the protracted nature of autobiographical event stimulation suggests a need for an approach that can capture networks operating on a longer time scale. So in the current analysis, we use a dimensional method called constrained principal component analysis for fMRI to analyze networks um, involved in a slow event-related task that's used to measure um, imagination and recall. So very broadly in this task, participants either imagine or recalled an event, um, or they completed a control task. Um, so specifically in the imagine uh, past and the imagine future trial, participants had to imagine specific events using the details that were shown on the screen that could have occurred in the past or the future. In the recall, they remembered the corresponding memory associated with all of the details that were shown on the screen. And once the participants had imagined or recalled an event, they pressed the button on the response box and this marked the end of the construction phase of the task um, and the beginning of the elaboration phase in which participants were required to elaborate and expand on the event details by imagining or retrieving as much detail about the event as possible from a field perspective. Um, the elaboration phase was uh, automatically ended after 24 seconds and so the combination of construction and elaboration phase altogether was 24 seconds and after that the two rating scales were presented each one of them were five seconds the first one was a five point scale concerning the amount of um, detailed participants retrieved or imagined and the second one was a binary scale assessing whether the event detail was experienced primarily from a field perspective or an observer's perspective um, like in the control trials, um, each of the uh, trials again began with the uh, construction phase in which participants were required to order the three objects by physical size and insert them in, and into a sentence which said, for example, X is smaller than Y and Y is smaller than Z. Once participants had silently set the sentence to themselves, they made a button press marking the end of the construction phase and then the participants had to elaborate on the representation of the nouns and generate as much detail about its meaning and visually imagining the object as possible. And following the elaboration phase, which um, ended at the 24 second mark, um, the participants had to do two rating scales. And the first one was a five point scale concerning the amount of details generated during elaboration phase. And the second scale was a binary scale uh, assessing task difficulty. So using fMRI CPCA, we were able to derive four components, which we then classified into um, networks. So one of our components was classified as the default mode network, which is uh, which has been previously 
been demonstrated to be involved when people are in are thinking about the past the present or the future and this characterization of the default mode network was um, evident in our results because as you can see um, this network shows activations when participants are recalling past events or imagining future events another component that we found was the multiple demand network, which is a network that's thought to be responsible for directing uh, one's attention towards environmentally relevant stimuli and then directing focus to sequentially solve the task through dividing into subtasks. And in our study, the multiple demand network showed an HDR peak at the beginning of each trial when participants were presented with the task stimuli and they had to pay attention to them in order to perform the task properly. And we can see that as the task progressed, um, the multiple demand network exhibited a mid-trial deactivation in all the conditions. And this is likely because another network that we found called the Maintaining Internal Attention Network was required at this time. Here's the multiple demand network and the Maintaining Internal Attention Network side by side. So as you can see, when the multiple demand network showed a mid-trial deactivation, the maintaining internal attention network showed a mid-trial activation, and this is the case in all the condition. So what this suggests is that the multiple demand network and the maintaining internal attention network uh, activate to some degree in reciprocity, meaning that volitional attention must be directed either internally or externally, and this is not a process that can occur simultaneously and we can see that in the multiple demand network the second hdr increase suggested attention towards environmentally relevant stimuli was once again required when participants had to complete the rating scales via button press so in other words the suppression of the multiple demand network was released as the requirement to attend to external representations arrived once again So a major finding that FMI-CPCA provided was the derivation of uh, the response network and the maintaining internal attention network, which I already mentioned. The response network is, uh, has been known to show activation when individuals make a motor response and in contrast suppresses when individuals are trying to refrain from responding. And this functional characterization was observed in our results as the response network showed activation when participants were required to complete the rating scales by a button press. So the maintaining network, I already talked about it a little bit, but just to go more in depth, this network has been shown to show activation during periods of volitional attention to internal mental representations. Um, in a lot of past work that we've done, this network showed activation when uh, Participants are engaged in working memory paradigms or when they're silently stating the function of a viewed object in the, um, in the thought generating uh, task or when participants are evaluating whether statements that are presented to them are self-referential. In the current analysis, the Maintaining Internal Attention Network, as we mentioned earlier, showed mid-trial activation in all the conditions when participants were required to direct their attention uh, and engage in this internal cognitive process of event stimulation and semantic association. Notably, the maintaining network showed a less pronounced activation in the recall condition relative to the imagined conditions, and we think this is likely because in the imagined conditions, participants are required to internally generate scenarios and focus on them, but whether in the recall condition, they underwent a more automatic process of recalling memories rather than generating scenarios. So they were required so in the recall condition, requ they required less volitional attention to the internal processes, uh, leading to a less pronounced activation of the maintaining network. So um, the data set that we looked at, it was actually originally analyzed in 2009, and the network's underlying recall and imagining were derived using partial least squares analysis. But the PLS analysis was unable to detect the maintaining internal attention network as, and the response network. Um, and because researchers were unable to specifically detect the maintaining internal attention network, they concluded that default mode network was the only network that's involved in imagining as it showed a greater activation in the imagined conditions relative to the other conditions. 
Um, the current set of result replicates this and expands it to the activation of the maintaining internal attention network. In other words, our findings show that the default mode network is not uniquely dominant when carrying out imagining, but worse in con combination with the maintaining internal attention network.